In this video, we're going to learn about environment. What are the different components of an environment? Then we will also learn what is an ecosystem and how an ecosystem is different from an environment. We'll also see different types of ecosystem. So overall, this video is going to be interesting and we'll learn a lot about environment and ecology. So let's begin with understanding what is meant by environment. Now, when we look at the term environment, it basically means the things that we have around us, the surrounding. So environment is the total of all the material. It could be both uh, living as well as non-living materials that are around us. The moment I said material in the context of living and non-living, there you go. I just made a distinction. So there are two components. Therefore, the environment, as we know, is made up of abiotic and biotic components. Now, abiotic refers to the non-biological, non-living component of the environment, such as sunlight, temperature, wind, land, soil, mountain, water, etc. And biotic refers to the biological, living component of the environment, such as plants, human beings, animals, and microorganisms. So abiotic is the non-biological, non-living component part of the environment and biotic is the biological living component of the environment. Please remember this difference. So now that you know the biotic and abiotic component of the environment, another thing that you have to understand is that our environment has three domains. Actually, it has four. I'll talk about the fourth one in a moment. But as of now, we'll just go with three domains. And these three domains are lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. The lithosphere refers to rocks and minerals, which is basically the land on which we stand. It comprises of the crust and the upper mantle. Then hydrosphere is referred to the liquid water component of the earth. It includes the oceans, seas, lakes, ponds, rivers and streams. The hydrosphere covers about 70% of the surface of the earth and it is the home for many plants and animals. The third one is the atmosphere. You remember this picture, different layers of the atmosphere? It is a thin layer of gases that exists above our planet's surface. It acts like a shield, which doesn't allow some life essential gases like oxygen to go out in the space. Likewise, it also prevents the incoming harmful rays of the sun to reach the Earth's surface. The atmosphere is an important part of what makes Earth livable. So in short, we refer these three domains as sea, air and land. Now there is a fourth domain and a very important domain that forms the environment. It is called biosphere. It consists of living organisms from human beings to animals to plants to bacteria to multicellular organisms. Basically, it includes all the living components of the earth. Now the unique thing about biosphere is that it interacts with other components of natural landscape such as land, water and soil. They are also influenced by the atmospheric elements such as the temperature, rainfall, moisture and sunlight. So basically what I'm trying to say is that these four domains uniquely interact with each other. They adjust in such a way that it makes life on earth possible. Or in other words, the survival of any living being on the earth depends upon the interaction of these four domains. So overall these three domains, that is the hydrosphere, lithosphere and atmosphere, it forms a triangle and the entire portion of the triangle, the thing in between, is the biosphere. So in a nutshell, all these four domains have to interact and coordinate with each other. Now let's get to know about the ecosystem. So moments back, I've told you about the four domains of our environment, which is the lithosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere and the biosphere. When these four domains coordinate with each other, there is a diversity of life forms on Earth. So when we hear the word ecology, ecology is the study of the Earth as a household of plants, human beings, animals and microorganisms. So basically what it means is that there is an interaction of all the organisms of a particular place. And within that interaction, there is a pattern and a relationship. Now, what are those patterns and relationship? It involves a lot of scientific studies to understand this pattern and relationship between organisms. And this is what the ecologists do. They primarily study the relationship between living organisms and their environment. It is this unique way in which these four components reciprocate with each other, which further makes way for different kinds of life forms. You see, there are about some 4 lakh plant species in the world. 
and animal species are approximately around 8.7 million. Just imagine the diversity of life forms. It is primarily because of the interaction between these four domains. So basically environment is the bigger form of the system. And in the environment there are four elements. And these elements along with the interrelation forms the ecosystem. Now ecosystems can be both natural and man-made. So examples of natural ecosystems are desert, forest or any aquatic place like a pond, river or lake. And examples of man-made ecosystem can be crop fields or gardens, then aquariums, dams and man-made ponds. The natural ecosystem is further divided into two types, that is aquatic ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem. Under aquatic we have the lake, wetland, river, oceans and under terrestrial ecosystem we have forest, then grassland, then deserts etc. Let's quickly understand how the ecosystem works. So basically life is based on energy, right? On earth, the sun is the primary source of energy. Now plants turn sunlight into chemical energy through a process called photosynthesis. Then plants and trees are the energy producers. Herbivores, plant eaters and carnivores that is meat eaters are energy consumers. They take in the chemical energy from sunlight through the food they eat. With that energy, they carry out all the processes of life. Now I'll give you a quick example. When an insect eats a plant, the insect takes in some of the sun's energy. If a bird eats the insect, the energy is transferred again. When a mammal like a wild cat eats the bird, then the energy is further transferred one more time. This is how energy flows through an ecosystem. So basically all organisms and ecosystems on earth are linked to one another. They are said to be interdependent.